sorry, twice in one day, but we're on fire. I'm also desperate to talk to grown-ups because I've been around sick little kids. So I um, got some questions about uh, monthlies to 10K, and I did this a while ago for the Turkey Trots back in November, and that um, archive video is still on my YouTube channel, I think. But in case I'm going to have to like head straight from here to go pick up kids, um, and if anything I'll walk away from is surely going to be forgotten or slipped to the bottom of the email pile, which is scary if I haven't mentioned that already. So I wanted to uh, answer that question very quickly, and that question was, Coach MK, I, I'm, I'm on your nice list. I bought the monthlies. I've been using them without fail since the beginning of the year. How do... I prepare for a 10K, how do I switch gears? Um, and the, this person also mentioned that the 10K is exactly four weeks out. So I'm assuming now that this is gonna be next week and that uh, 5K is um, right at the end of March. But <clears throat> either way, instead of putting dates on it and then having everyone like ignore everything I say because I got the date wrong, we're just gonna look at these at like right, four, three, two, one. Okay. And you don't need, going back to the, the stream I did, I performed earlier, remember I said that if we're, part of the reason that the monthly plans exist is to keep that high base all the time. And when you have a big base all the time, um, you can switch gears quickly and easily. We can pivot. We can go from a half marathon, turn around, take our time, get excited about something else and say, hey, you know what? I want to perform. I want to see if I can do a faster 10K. And then we can put one on the calendar, sharpen up for that. And... The, so if you keep that base year round, all you need is a very brief sharpening period to get ready for that specific distance. Okay, so and the monthly plans as I wrote them way back when, um, that base is enough to knock out a half marathon whenever you want. And that was intentional uh, for that reason. So what we want to do, I'm assuming what this person wants to do, is have respectable 10K time to show for all the work that she would have been doing on these plans since the beginning of the year. So here, what I recommend, if, if any, any column that's left empty means do it as written, right? The only things we modify <coughs> or the only modifications we make are the things that I've written up here. So with the monthlies is bringing enough consistency, we only need, we can sharpen and taper at the same time. So all we can do, we, we can't really sharpen if we don't have a huge base to work with. Um, coming into a training cycle. Remember I said all of this earlier, so this is a logical question to follow from my earlier stream. So we are, the things to remember, the things you can do that will have the maximum impact in four weeks out from your race, um, if it's a 10K. Jess, are you able to get that? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, if we're four weeks out from, if we're four weeks out from the 10K, um, then we want to keep um, so these, these, everything in this column is going to be 65 minutes, 65 minutes, sorry, I should, didn't finish this as well as I thought I did. It's going to be 60, 45, 45, okay. So this workout that you're going to do on, because this is a sharpener and this is a sharpener, the workout you're going to do on Monday and Wednesday of weeks uh, of weeks one and two, um, it's called a sharpener. So you take the total workout time, which is 65 minutes. Okay. That final five minutes, by the way, is for accelerators. Okay. So it's a 60 minute workout. Now don't spin out about this too much. I know a lot of you guys freaked out when I was like, divide the workout into thirds and then start the accelerators. Back when I tried to explain what a stride sandwich was, and everyone was like, ah, melted and died. Like, oh my God, third to see. Oh my God, they're about to kill me. They're about to kill me. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, y'all, chill. Like, I got more questions about the stride sandwich when it when we first rolled it out. I'm like, you take 60 minutes divided in, into thirds. That's three 20 minute blocks at the beginning of the second 20 minute block. You know, and then, then you do this. If it's a 45 minute workout, that's three 15 minute blocks at the beginning of the second 15 minute block. I try to give a general rule that would apply to all, to the same workout regardless of the workout time. And it's just like, I ch but people just like, I don't know what to do now. So try without going there. Oh, boo boo. I know. Oh, here yeah, it's okay. Wanna say hi? I said, we have had a long day. We've had a long day. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So, 65 minute sharpener workout. What you're going to do 
is you're going to warm up for 10 minutes and you're going to cool down for 20 minutes okay so how much time does that left does, does that leave for the one by one for the sharpener that's right 30 minutes okay so write this down there's not enough room over here i'm only only, only going to do so much spoon feeding guys the rest is on you so it's a 65 minute workout that's 60 minutes of the workout plus accelerators 10 minute warm-up 20 minute cool down consistently for weeks monday wednesday weeks one and two all right so what you do for that 30 minutes in between it's called a sharpener it's best if performed on a track and what you do is you go to a track and you get in lane one and in lane one yay you're gonna run as fast as you can not quite a save the baby sprint but if you look down 100 meters is a long way to go you're going to look down at your watch and you're going to take notice of that hard hard pace and you shouldn't go much faster than 5k pace faster is not better remember we want we want you sharp we don't want you burned out by the time we get to the race all right and we do this sharpener to make 10k pace feel better and more sustainable over time so what you're going to do for that 30 minutes you're going to run at that comfortable pretty fast pace for 50 meters jog for 50 meters Comfortable fast pace, 50 meters, jog for 50 meters. Um, and if that is just too much math and blows your mind, cool. But it's a really good workout. It's specific to the 10K distances and shorter. Um, I'd highly recommend it. It's a really good way to prime those fast twitch muscles, recruit them over to a shorter event, but not so much so that we can't come back out of that mode if you're going to a half marathon next. So the sharpener workout is one of my favorites. It's really potent. Um, and again, it's a good way to get that neuromuscular stimulus that leads to sustained speed over time without having to practice sustained speeds so much. It's 100% it's of the impact with 50%, sorry, 100% of the output with 50% of the input and 50% of the strain, strain and stress on your body. Okay, so that is what the sharpener is. And you're going to do a sharpener on Monday and Wednesday of weeks one and two. You're gonna end that workout with, as silly as it sounds, accelerators. And remember, this is down here, I've written what an accelerator is in this term. So I want you, that's 20 seconds of that controlled acceleration to a 5K pace, hold for a few seconds, then control deceleration back down to a jog. Don't forget the deceleration, do not turn this into a sprint, don't do it, okay, thanks. So when you do turn it into a sprint, it is literally a different workout. It's too much, it's too fast, you will burn out and we don't want that. We just want you faster on race day. So 20 seconds of that accelerator that I just explained followed by 40 seconds of recovery. That is all together, 20 plus 40 is 60 seconds. That's one minute. We're gonna do it six times, that's six minutes. So really that should be 66, but F it, it's late in the day. And my baby's holding the markers and I'm not gonna get it back. You're welcome. So that is what you can do on Monday and Wednesday. On Sunday, you're gonna look at the plan and you're gonna look at the long run as written on your plan. I don't know what it is, because remember, this is in giving you a framework to work with no matter what week you're in. If you want to make this super duper complicated, cool. If you want me to check your math, you're going to have to wait until I'm free. But generally speaking, don't spin out and get too deep in the weeds. You're going to take your long run for the, on, on Saturday for week one and week two. And it's going to become a one by one. That's one minute on, one minute off. And if you follow Stephanie Bruce on Twitter, you see that she did this workout in Denmark last weekend. It's a very, 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 very good one. So the, these workouts, this is, you could argue that this is speed work. Yeah, I'm like, I just see this as prep work. I would not do this to every long run. This is not superior in every single instance. I would never do it for a marathon, only for my more advanced people that are blogging serious amounts of miles. Uh, and to give you some perspective, this one by one will be done by my people doing three days at the fair. They have a five hour long run, hour one easy, hour two one by one, hour three easy, hour four one by one, hour five easy, hour six one by one. And the reason we do that, and that's gonna be an insanity run. That's a super effing long insanity run designed for both mental strength they're going to need to do this ridiculous event that they want to do. Yay! And also the cardiovascular benefits of speed work without the stress of speed work since we have to run so effing much for three days at the fair. So at any minute, you're like, that sounds terrible. I want you to remember, Julie has it worse. Don't complain in front of Julie because she might come at you. And I don't know if you've heard, but she's really strong now. So she actually could be, you know, it hurts. So hi, this is Violet. Hi, Violet. Hi, Violet. Hi, Violet. Hi, Violet. Yay! So... 
yeah, the long runs are terrible. So what this one K, uh, long, what this one kilometer long run is going to look like, you take that long run and you divide it into thirds again. So if it's a two hour long run, don't split hairs about the minutes. It can be 45 minutes, 45, it could be, sorry, 30 minute warm up, 45 minute one by one, 45 minute cool down. You always want the cool down to be longer than the warm up. Okay, so just keep the math easy. If it's two hours, 45, 45, that's 90 minutes plus 30 more minutes, that's a solid two hours. Okay, so if this is a two hour long run, then this what this 1K is gonna look like. Okay, you're going to warm up for 30 minutes, then for 45 minutes, because that's the middle part of your workout, do the math that we just did for that 45 minutes, you're gonna do one kilometer at 10K race pace. Yay! We're gonna assume that's two minutes per mile faster than your easy effort pace. Or if there's a faster number you wanna play with, I say go for it, but don't get too aggressive because if you get too greedy, we're gonna burn you out before race day. So a good starting point is two minutes per mile faster than your easy effort pace at any given point in time. So then that middle portion is one kilometer at race pace, and then one kilometer, super slow jogging, maybe even slower than what your easy effort pace usually is. The last time I did one of these, my um, my warm up pace was like a 9.30, and then my recovery pace was like a 13.30, because 10K pace is hard, okay? Do not be, there is never a floor past which you cannot fall on the recovery section. What I need you to do is keep moving in something that resembles a jog, okay? Getting that bounce, and the specificity um, on your on your feet with your ankles. Okay, she's like, I'm coming with the markers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna fix it up. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is what you do, and then the la the final 45 minutes are gonna is the cool down where you can pick the pace back up, or you can keep that nice super slow 13:30 whatever that you want. I don't really care. What I care is that you keep running, um, and. It probably should be a little bit faster than your active recovery, but if you feel like you overreach too much and you're a little burned out, going extra slow on that cool down isn't gonna hurt. That's Don't get mad at yourself. You haven't thrown anything away. If you learned, it was worth it. You got what you needed. Make the adjustment next time. So remember, when we're sharpening, we're not all out sprinting. It's no faster than 5K pace. It doesn't mean you have to get to 5K pace, but we need to get somewhere faster than 10K pace no faster than 5k pace and i know that means you're all going to be going 3k pace and that's fine whatever i'm not even going to argue with you so that is what first two weeks look like then you're coming to back to this one by you've done a 1k one by 1k over here now you're going to do one by one minute so we're going to take that workout i'm going to divide it again into sections section one is 10 minute warm-up section two is the meat of the workout section three is the cool down we want the warm-up never to be shorter than 10 minutes we want the cool down to be longer than the warm-up so if we were to divide this into three sections you could do 20 20 20 and that's fine um, and that's actually what I would prefer on this workout. So knowing that y'all get smart with math and you get really confused because you're like, rule for one, but not for the other. I'm like, just to always, we start by taking the time blocks and dividing it into thirds. Okay, for these harder workouts, I like a longer warm up, personally. So anything less than 10 minutes for a one by one, I'd be like, actually, let me tell you what I'm going to do and I'm going to warm up longer, okay? Uh, anything, the thing that we cut is we cut that, the work in the middle. If something has to be trimmed, we never trim the cool down, never trim the cool down, never trim the cool down, never trim the cool down. Okay, so a one by one. So we're going to take 60, divide it by three. That's three 20 minute blocks. Block one is the warm up. Block two is one minute at 10K pace, one minute active recovery. Block three is going to be the cool down. Okay, so to be really effing clear, that middle section. One minute hard, one minute easy, that is a two minute interval. And it's a 20 minute block. So there are 10 repeats of one minute hard, one minute easy, okay? I can't make it any, any I can't break it down any further than that for you. So, especially since no one's really paying me at the moment, I'm doing this because you're on the nice list and I wanna appreciate, and I appreciate you donating to uh, the Blue Bench, which means so much to me. So, that is what a one by one is. You go to one by one for 60 minutes. Then Wednesday, remember we're saying math, it's a one by one for 45 minutes. That's three 15 minute blocks. To make the math easy for you, we're gonna move it around and make that middle thing 16 minutes. So that's eight sets of one by one. And where do we cut the one minute off? That's right, the warm up, because we never, ever, 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 ever cut the cool down. Yay, you! Okay, then the long run, this is your last long run before the race, is 85 minutes at easy effort. No fun stuff. 
Then the one by one for 45 minutes, the Monday of the race, one by one for 30 minutes, the Wednesday prior to the race, 20 minutes easy effort Thursday. We're gonna do just one kilometer on Friday. Yo, don't even need, do your, do all of the silly toes, all of the warm ups, and go directly from that ease into find and hold on to. We're only, we're only running for a kilometer, and that kilometer don't spin out about how much time you spend at 10k pace. What I care about is that you can go out there, start a job, ease into it, and find 10k pace. If you find it in the first 10 seconds, you, that's not easing in. It takes at least like it takes about two minutes to kind of ease into. A kilometer because if you're running it anywhere from four to six minutes four to six kilometers um per mile i almost said per mile um but whatever so f it you're, you're gonna run one kilometer ease into and hold on to your 10k race pace and then ease out of it and follow up with accelerators again and it's this pattern for accelerators every single time so that is what the friday before looks like it's a super short run do nothing on saturday race on sunday okay that is what I would do. Now, other things I've added in here. So if it's in black, it's a run. If it's in orange, it's a walk. And if it's green, that's jumping rope. So end every single run with every single run, these and the ones that I haven't put here. Why? Because you're not changing them in any way. All of the runs are gonna end with six minutes of accelerators following this pattern, okay? It's gonna help your butt. These are speed drills that are just gonna hammer that in a little bit better into your muscles as much as we can as efficiently as we can without causing excess excessive amounts of cumulative fatigue before race day so at the end of your runs after your accelerators not before but after your accelerators so on on monday wednesday friday and saturday for weeks one two and three only not all of it everything excessive we do all the all the non-running stuff we cut race week okay because you don't need it um, but you're going to do one minute of jumping rope on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays. You're going to do your run as written. You're going to do your six minutes of accelerators, and you're going to follow that up with one minute of jumping rope in place as fast as you can, bouncing on the balls of your feet. Um, it's a, just a, and I've talked at length multiple times about why this is great, but this is particularly great for a short distance event. For us, right, because we're not actually short distance track runners, we don't we consider anything less than a half marathon to be short and almost not worth the money, or at least that's what people tell me. So go get your money's worth. This is how you do it. Um, and then your recovery week, you're going to walk for 30 minutes, walk for 20 minutes, walk for 30 minutes, don't do anything. And then your AW here, you're getting back into the plan as written. I'm assuming this is the first week of April, so you'd just be jumping right back in. It's perfect. It's a cut down week. If you, if you are on a plan where this week back in would be egregiously long like really can i go directly into after racing this can i really go right back into doing like a 90 or an hour on friday and two and a half hours on saturday uh if when in doubt i say don't cut it back and then jump where you jump in exactly where you're supposed to be in the plan the following monday because remember we have kept a big base for a really long time it's not a big deal Right. If this is your first month in the monthlies, if you haven't really been, this is not a general rule for anyone other than people that have, that have been consistently participating in my monthly plans and doing all the work as written. And I know the person that sent me this email has been uh, because that's just who she is. So that if as written looks like too much, you can never go wrong with 45 and 95, which is the, the long run sandwich at the end of the first month on every single month monthly plan. So that is your baseline if what you're looking at thinks might be too much or you think you're not ready to jump into the deep end of the pool. That is exactly what I would do. That is exactly how I would look at it. Before I forget, I would add in at least 30 minutes of walking on Sunday as well as after your race. It's one of the best ways to recover. So here we go. Terrible. Um... Yes, I did update my info panel since this morning. Thank you so much for noticing. I'm excited. Um, I forget to do it, and I'm almost never at my desktop. So when the, the few times that I am, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get it. Thank you. I love that. I was really excited for this podcast photos. That was a photo shoot that was a disaster. And um, we happened to get some good headshots out of it um, that I now use on Facebook and LinkedIn. Yay bonus. I wasn't even going to put my picture on the podcast until I got these back, and my husband was like, ooh, look, this would be really pretty. And all, by the way, all the podcasts that I listen to, 
have photos. So I'm like, well, sure, why not? So yay, there's that. Yeah, 3K pace is awful. Go have fun, Sarah. Yay, cheese with Ross. 10K is too short. Yeah, it's too hard. It's a uh, 10K is a hard. The shorter the distance, the harder the effort. And it's, um, you know, once you've kind of learned what 5K pace is and 5K effort feels like, you see why it's really hard to get people to reach their full potential on a 5K and why I don't ever race them. I'm the lazy marathoner. Marathons only hurt because you're out there for a long time and you can train a lot of that away. There's nothing you can do in a 5 or a 10K. Properly executed 5K or 10K, you cross the finish line, you see God, and you die. And that is a thing. Ask any coach that coaches cross country. They're like, what is, what, what's, the, what's the race plan? They're like, don't die, see God, let him escort you across the finish line, then die. So I'm like, yay, that sounds amazing. Thank God my high school did not have a cross country team. All right, so that's it. This is good info. I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, I hope this answers the question for the person who asked. If you are on the nice list and you're thinking of doing a 10K, this is basically what I would do for all of you. If you are two weeks into your first monthly and haven't really been running beforehand, I would not race that 10K, treat it like long run, give it a couple months, then come back and do this and go dominate because this is a really good plan. So there you go. You can do whatever you want, but I'm here to coach and love you and tell you the best way to get what you want is to not kid yourself about where you're at. Take time, build up to this, and it's a really powerful combination. Trying to jump in too soon because you want to be ready uh, now because you're not patient because it's coming because you want your money's worth. All those are bad reasons. Good luck to you. Yay, your coach, you're loved. I'm going to go win at being the last person in line at carpool as usual to get my kid because F sitting in carpool. I don't mind being last at all.